March 1st, finishing up my garden tour to render it and put it up online, and it is snowing in Southern California in a place it hasn't snowed in almost 100 years. It's snowing! The deck is white! March 1st, spring is almost here. I'm so excited. This is going to be the most unusual garden tour you've ever seen because I'm going to step around and show a little bit of everything. What's been going on the past few days with our storms, our blizzards, the snow, the hail here in Southern California and the cold weather in the 30s? 20 degrees different what we're supposed to have, but it's going to be fun. Stick with it till the end. There's so much going on. And I know you're gonna love it, and I know you're gonna learn something too, so you can garden on the cheap and the free, like we do. And do it not just cheap and free, but do it great. Kinda like Mother Nature does. What is that? Oh my gosh, again? Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. Sunny California? I don't think so. We had a hailstorm three times in one day, and we normally only have it three times a year, if that. What I'm going to do is a different type of garden tour. You've seen me doing updates on our weather, covering the hummingbirds and the garden and what's going on. Well, I figured what I would do is combine a few days before March 1st, since, well, so many things are going on and I'm not gonna be working in the garden, in 30 and 40 degrees and Gary is working in the garden so you're going to see a little bit of him and what I'm going to do is let you know as the next few days go on what's going to happen because we've got three more days of rain by the first it will be the third day not counting last week what we went through we've had bizarre weather blizzards and everything here in Southern California so I'm going to start it off very differently for the conversation uh, that Gary and I had. I was hanging out the window with the hummingbirds around me as he was working in his garden and I didn't know what he was doing. So when he came in, it's a candid conversation. He didn't know, but he does know of course now, that I had my phone on. So you can hear him just talk like we sit and talk about different things and what he was doing. And then after that, I'm going to be showing you the garden on what happened and we didn't have a lot of damage. Normal damage, I know a lot of people had a lot worse go on and with us I've had some plants die from the cold, things got snapped and died and so you'll see what's going on and keep in mind we're in Southern California and we're 20 degrees all week under of what we're supposed to be. So we're not supposed to be this cold so the plants aren't used to it and hopefully all the birds will be okay but Gary found something in his garden. So what were you doing in your garden? I was harvesting weeds for um, trench composting. Trench composting? Yeah. But you you were moving that bathtub. Boy, I saw you try to pull it and you couldn't pull it. And then you put it on wood and you moved it right with wood. It's wood and rollers. I've got pieces of pipe to roll it along the pieces of pipe. The wood is for the pipe to sit on. There's a pipe underneath the wood? No, the wood the wood is sitting on the ground. The pipe is sitting on the wood and the bathtub is sitting on the pipe. So when you roll it, the pipes roll on the wood, which moves the bathtub forward. Oh, and then what are you trying to figure out where you're gonna put it? Just leave it out of the way? You're pulling it out of the well, way. Bit by bit I'm moving it towards where I want it. You know where you want it? I've got a good idea where I want it, near the apple trees. But you're not setting it up right now. No. Oh, look, it rolled nice. I was watching to the window. It was rolling really nice. I know I walked through the garden. What I've decided to do is not to do a regular garden tour because it's like in two, three days. Because okay. we have three more days of rain. Yeah. Today's the only day no rain. And then it's three more days. And it's still going to be in the 30s because probably it's a light cloud cover. Yeah. So we're gonna be like 37, which means it could even get colder. So what I'm gonna do is kinda of put together what's going on for the past few days, which would be better because a garden tour would be ridiculous when I'm not out there and it's not gonna look any different. Yeah. But boy, do I have a lot of broccoli out there. I'm gonna pull it in. I um, started 
like I'm pulling, I'm using stinging nettles and mainly and for, to put where I'm going to plant the tomatoes. Um, but I found two asparagus have come up, spears have come up, so I cleared around that. I started clearing around my asparagus to get it ready. And that purple, I don't know if it's purple sprouting broccoli, that purple plant, I think it might be, it's really purple, it's laying on the ground and it started to set root. And I've got a bunch of green Swiss chard coming up in different places. Why, why do you think it's not purple spreading? Well, I don't know what it is. Are the leaves fringed or are they round? They're, they're sort of feather-like. They're thin, narrow fe feather-like. I'm not sure what it is. It's something you guys need to know I planted down there. Okay, because I have one in my garden that's in a tote. And I want to move it out of the tote and put it somewhere else. And it's a hybrid. And instead of having that fringed, Fray, not frayed, but kind of like ripply edge. Yeah. The leaves are perfectly round. It looks like the one I really like. My colleagues call it I'll, my I'll have to take a photo of some of this stuff because it's too hard to describe. Okay, so you have something else because this is perfectly oblong, perfectly shaped, and the leaves are so purple, but it, it's got to be hybrid. It doesn't look like anything else growing yeah. out there. Yeah, I have no idea. And yet we've eaten it because I use it, so I want to get that out of the tote. I'm not working out there. It's freezing. I mean, I'm looking, I walked around and all the tomato plants are dead. The brassicas, of course, love this weather. They're okay. And anything else, I've got some zucchini out there, but even the ones that came up, the ones that were born and raised here, yeah. no, they, the leaves are kind of curled and I don't want to mess with them. If they come back before I get to it, that's one thing. But otherwise, there's no use because we're not going to warm up for at least a week or two. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm going to just work on the deck and then let whatever happens, happens out there. Once the weather warms up, all that just goes back into the totes and it becomes part of the soil. And I'm just going to top it with something and go for it because there's no use for me trying to even do anything. And I saw you dug a trench. I thought the lake was gone. Oh, yeah, I dug a trench. You could put a pipe there and then direct it to where you yeah, want underground. That's what I want to do. That's why I put a pipe under the concrete slab that I poured. In the rainbow a, garden? In the rainbow garden, there's a four inch pipe under there. Just at some point, I, I had in my mind that at some point in the future, I could connect it at the corner of the house and direct the water coming down the driveway down to the avocados, down that direction or something. And like to the bottle brush. Yeah, well, the back I could do, I could collect a couple of ways. But yeah, I directed the water down and then after I did it, I thought, well, I should have um, did a clip of doing it. But I, I harvested some of the wood chips, broken down wood chips, because in the trench, it settled on the bottom and we harvested some of that to, for seed starting in the back room because it's already sifted. Oh. It was sifted by the water. Because I was surprised. I walked out there and I saw, oh, I just saw on the camera like this morning yeah. or last night, it was a massive yeah. lake. And I thought if Anissa comes home early, I don't know where she was going to park. The whole, you had already moved the truck way over. Yeah. So you were not in that lake. And then I saw it cut out and I thought, uh oh, maybe somebody got stuck. And then I saw you dug it out and all the water's gone. Yeah. And but at least it watered all the plants. Watered all the plants. And I directed it in a couple of directions at the end. Like I went towards one pomegranate tree and then towards the other. I direct, redirected it, but I figured a day like today, if I get it cleared, it might the ground might dry out a little bit. Yeah, it's only going to be for today and yeah. tomorrow it starts raining. All right, well, let me go get some stuff done. After the storm. You know, I wasn't out here yesterday, so I haven't seen my garden for two days. So let's do a quick walkabout just to see what's going on. This is all done. I should do a video on this, shouldn't I? This, I removed all my ginger and turmeric and I stored it right now in the house, but I didn't get to this, but that's okay. I'm gonna get to this later. See, there's still ginger down there and in here too, I gotta get it out so I can replant it. This is perfect. This is completely set up. And as soon as we get through all this really cold weather, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of ginger and turmeric in there. I'm gonna be early this year. Let's look and see what's going on in the front yard. Hmm, everything looks okay. 
Okay, so we've got a broccoli that fell over. It was growing in a pot and the roots had gone down, but that probably snapped. All in all, no complaints. Oh, I'm gonna do cuttings off my finger line. That looks okay, it's cold. Look at the broccoli heads on that one. I really gotta grab that, take all that off. I'll do that later. I might cook that for dinner. Oh, look at all this, you see this? This might be a hybrid that I grew, but it doesn't matter. They taste really good. Let me double check. Mmm, delicious. Okay, I will come back, clip that off, and we'll have that for dinner tonight. You know, the brassicas look wonderful. I'm gonna touch this up in the spring and do something. Look at this. Chamomile came up. Look, more in there. Oh, I'm so excited. It's gonna flower, too. From a plant that was there two years ago got plans for that. Let's walk down here. Like I said, I haven't been out here. I decided whatever happened, happened, can stay. You know, this is where Gary keeps his cement mixer. So it's a cover. It looks bad, but that's what it is. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how cold it is. I think we're about 40. Okay, all this is going to be changed, so I don't even care what's going on with these upside down planters. Look at that, I got tomatoes. Can you believe it? tomatoes but I want to gut all this I'm going to do it much more efficient and easier to do and totally efficient the birds are peeking through the plants right now looking for insects I know this squash plant started to come up and grow oh my goodness surprise surprise look at that last year's plant really cool I'm going to I guess I'm gonna leave that one. I'm gonna clean up the green sorrel later. The red sorrel, I might leave that too and clean that up. I, I don't have to worry about Swiss chard. Oh, it's seeped in. Or Gary pushed it out. He might have pushed it out. This was a lake. Let's see if we can get across here. Uh, you know, every tomato plant pretty much on the property is gone. It could not take this cold. Let's see if we can walk out here real quick. Oy, I'm gonna seep through. Be like quicksand. Ah, my lid blew off. I wonder if those squash survived the freezing weather. This I'm going to change up. We're going to see something different in the spring. I kind of have plans for this. We'll see if my plans continue the way I want. Look at the buckets of water. Look at that. Uh, it looks a little sad, which is fine because these are coming up and they're, they're just the squash that grew in the yard, so I'll probably do something else with that. I had the tote lid laying on top. Yeah, see, squash can't take that cold weather. Geraniums can. Tomato plants, see, they're all gone. They could not survive the freezing cold. Look at the celery on this thing. In the ground. In the, look at the rabbits must be chewing up on it and maybe even the sow bugs and stuff. Okay, sugar cane is falling over. Couldn't take the cold and I have to redo the ponds. That's okay, but you know what? Look at the brassica. All in all, it looks pretty good. Okay, truck bed. Definitely have to do something different because I'm not picking the shark fin melon. I really don't care for it. I'm trying to care for okay, it. Okay, I was desperate. No zucchini, so I made an enchilada, and I used a lot of things in there, beans and corn and some greens and fried onions and everything. Well, I'll tell you something. That shark fin melon, that was a nightmare to cut up. I don't know if I'll do it again, but the enchilada really did turn out really good. Gary loved more it. More showing up as the leaves are dying back. Look at all the weeds. Interesting. Not as many rabbits eating this stuff. They should be eating that. All right. And then the apple trees are trying to make a comeback. These are just apple trees that I grew from seed. So I don't expect much. Oh, the herbs. Are, look at the flowers. That's a nectarine tree that grew on the property. Moved it here a couple years ago now, and look how nice. So we, may, well, we might get nectarines, but here's the problem. The deer come through. They come through there. This is my property. I could fence it. But if I do, then I lose nature. So I don't, I don't want to. But when I was a little girl, I would have been in seventh heaven to have all this. So why not leave it? I, st I enjoy it now, no matter what age I am. All right, so we got sage. Well, we'll probably redo that. I have plans on putting a two system here. The hawks are flying around enjoying the break in the rain. 
This is all gutted. I'm gonna have to gut it. It will look beautiful when I take the soil out. Look at that, they're singing and happy. Maybe they're saying, oh, we're gonna have good weather now. It's gonna warm up to 80 degrees, 70 at night. Yeah, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. All right, so this all gut. So all in all, you know, I mean, look, all the chairs are standing with all that rain, nothing sunk into the ground, nothing's been touched. I still have beautiful Swiss chard growing, but all this, I, you know, I started, I redid this. So all I have to do is pull out the greens that are growing in there, probably celery, but I do want to redo all this. If I don't redo it, it still grows, but if I pull out at least half of it, load it up with leaves from the garden, it'll just take off and burst into life. Okay, this is another one I've got to get to. This is my turmeric. And I want to see what's in there. So I've got to get this out soon. Hopefully I can get to that this week. I did the front, so now I'll do this one. Look, a chair blew over. Uh, I see some limbs on this that might be broke. And Gary said there's a lot more trees that broke down there. Oh, I think I see a... I can't... I don't think the camera will pick it up. I see a split limb there. He's been going around collecting different things that came down and throwing them in piles and stuff. And then that tree fell that's down there. The hawks usually hang out on that one. It was already mostly dead, so that's gone. So my junk pile that I do come to and collect stuff out of. I want to do something with the junk pile too. Obviously, somebody... Okay, I see what he did. He came out here this morning. See what he did? And he built this. He's probably going to put a pipe or something. He wants to do something at some point. And he let the water go straight out. So because this was literally a lake yesterday, I looked on the one camera that's sitting up there. All the other cameras came down. And I could see this was a lake. So he drained the water out, Gary. All right. Oh, backside. Let's keep going. We already looked here. Look at the citrus are okay. Rosemary's okay. You know, we're okay. We're good. Look at the flowers. Oh, they said, yay, we love this. Is that cool? I don't know how the pepper will be, but look how far the soil's dropped down. I'll redo that later. I, I'm debating if I'm gonna build an art chair or not. I might. Yeah, things are blowing around. You know, no big deal, let's just pick it up. I'm gonna redo a lot of that. I still have zinnias and stuff growing in there. And then the bird garden, we've made a circle. Strawberries. Do I have a story on strawberries? How do you start strawberries? Not the way everybody was saying. So I am now growing strawberry runners on my kitchen window. Now I've got things going on on the kitchen window as well, just because I'm not working in the garden. Got a little bit of rosemary I'm rooting up there. This ice cream container that's covered in fabric, this has got ginger that actually grew in here and it just died back. This is finger lime I'm starting. In here, that's some pepper seeds I saved. This is actually turmeric skins that I'm collecting and it's filling. And as it's filling, I keep adding more soil to it. I will put that out later on in the season when it's warmer and the skins will grow as well. So I'll get so much turmeric. This is a strawberry plant. Came up with a different way of starting them and now that I know it works, I'm gonna be growing a whole lot more strawberry plants so this is going really well. Then this is just a spider plant, airplane plant, whatever you want to call it. This was a tomato plant that's growing on my deck. It's growing so vigorous that when I trimmed off the bottom, I decided I might as well root them and get them going. We've got, of course, chocolate mint, which is so nice to drop into my coffee. Now this is a flower pot that Little Bean sent me a while ago, oh, years ago. Now look at this. I've got turmeric growing all winter in the window. I've got walking onions that I'm using, and you know what's so funny? I trim my pepper plant down. Look, I grow peppers, and I don't make a big deal out of it. I've got a couple little tricks I do to get that going. But all this in here, these are all new peppers coming up, seeds I drop in there. So this can take off. I've grown a tomato plant that went all the way up the window that was four feet tall. And then, of course, here I'm rooting a plant as well. I've got mint in there, and I've got a mushroom plant in there. That's so I can root it and get it out when the weather warms up. So just because I'm not doing a ton of stuff in the garden, and don't kid yourself, I'm going through every day, even when it's raining, I may skip a day or two, but I'm collecting leaves and I'm making soil. So there's still action going on 
in the garden or in the house. And I'm planting in pencil boxes right now and starting some seeds and getting different seeds growing already. Maybe we should go look in Gary's greenhouse room he made and see what's going on there soon. And then on the deck, all it seems like I'm doing is emptying water. This is doing great. I can cover my plant. So the tomato plant's hanging on really nice there. Lettuce is doing good covering up from the birds. Look at the radishes. You probably saw this video just a few weeks ago. Already full of radishes. Even some white ones are growing in there because I think it was a mixed lot that I threw in there. And then I've got lettuce coming up in my swinging coffee can. The cilantro is doing fantastic. Well, this is not a tour on the deck. I just wanted to show you that I'm not really getting that much done that I wanted to because I've got to empty that out. There's, that one is done, but I want to change that around. All in all, everything is doing really good and I'm so pleased with the lettuce. At night, just because the wind chill is so cold, I can lower this down and protect my lettuce. Look how big they've gotten already. I mean, you may say, well, gee, they're not that big, but look, we've been harvesting off of this and this one's doing fantastic too. So I'm quite pleased with everything going on everywhere. All right, celery. Oh, they perked back up. You know, the other day I came out here, they were yellow and they were drooping down all the leaves. And I thought, I'm going to lose my papaya. And they hung in there. I'm telling you, this is not a joke. I've made jokes about this tote with the papayas growing in it. I'm going to grow more papayas and they will be in totes. They will be in totes. It sounds crazy, but you know what? They have done the best. They get direct water. And it's that their roots on very close to the trunk are drained well. Why are they drained well? Because they're in totes. So I'm going to redo it and do it differently. Look at the brassicas love the cold weather. So I have no complaints. Look at this. So now you got to see things. Oh, yeah, I've got... Look at my pride and joy fell over everywhere and broke. Okay, so we got a lot of broken limbs. I expected that. Absolutely expected all that. This made it, you know why? I went through the other day and collected a lot of leaves and I took all the leaves off from the base that would pull. You know, with all the wind and I'm, I'll tell you, it sounded like a hurricane going through. Everything did really, really well. I'm gonna put some more seed out. When it's pouring, we try to find shelter for the seed. And I'll show you, I'm gonna make some more bird feeders that will work excellent in the garden, even if it's raining. So I, and that's something I need to get here because they don't mind the wet seed. That's not a problem. They just don't wanna eat it when it's underwater. All right, this will all be cleared out. This is the last of my old, old uh, dinosaur kale and it's finally gone so on um, that will be just compost in fact I might clear this area and do something else that looks better and easier to deal with and functional remember this there's the plant that I planted in there look how beautiful isn't that gorgeous I'm very pleased very very pleased this is another day it has been doing nothing but raining at least no hail Look at this, rain and rain for days. We had one day of a break and it was supposed to be a full 24 hours. It was not, it was raining. I've got to go stop these birds from wanting to drink outside. I didn't put anything in the feeders. I pulled a few of them in, but they insist, they look and they scream. Can you hear them? They scream. The window is full. I can show you that. Oh, real quick. Look at this, this in here. Can't get out there without getting all wet. Look at that, can you see the flower? I'll have to show you when it's not raining, I can't. Look at that, it's a geranium cutting. That's why I said it's so good to propagate in your containers that you're growing in. That is sitting just in a container that's full of soil and matter in it to feed what's down there, you know, leaves and stuff. And that's in a flower pot. And all it is is a cutting and the flower bloomed. Isn't that too cool? So I don't have to do anything but just watch it bloom. All I do is keep adding on nectar in there, taking them in, washing them, and putting more nectar out. I'm trying to keep everything out of the rain, including I put an extra feeder way down there, and I haven't seen them use it yet, but I'm sure they will. There's no reason why they won't. I just set it up to keep them out of the rain, and yet there's still a lot that want to feed in the rain. 
let's go check out Gary's greenhouse room. Now we're gonna see what's behind the curtain. Some place we haven't gone for a while. <gasps> oh my gosh, I decided to walk in here. So you're working in here? Yeah, I'm working in here. I'm getting my sweet potatoes set up for the year. So how are you doing the sweet potatoes in here? And then I'll go over a well, few other things. Well, like I, like I have been setting them up in the dish pans, I've got things stored in here, but I'm just going to put them in the sifted wood chips. And I dug some of these up because they were buried in the mud. And what I want to do is separate the different varieties. Because in my garden, it's a jungle and it's difficult to find the varieties. So I'm going to grow some a little differently this year. So I'm getting them started in here. Well, they need the sunlight to get started, yeah, right? They need the sunlight. If the tube is exposed to the sun, it stimulates growth. So this is kind of how I started them years ago. I've grown them from slips that I've purchased and store-bought that years ago you were, you were able to just go into a store and buy them. And they, you know, you pretty much could grow them. That's true. A lot of people don't know that 90% of them probably won't grow now. Yeah, even the organic term, organic, doesn't mean anything anymore. So, Considering organic or synthetic and the terminology, it's, I don't want to get into the, yeah. all that. But I would but... Su suggest if people want to grow from store-bought, hedge their bets by getting some slips. Make sure you get slips and not vine cuttings. But get some slips, you got get a better variety, choice of varieties. But growing them from store-bought is worth trying. Do you know what types you have here, or you just kind yeah, of randomly got, went through? I've got Okinawa purple. This one's an Okinawa purple. I've got some of my other purple varieties. These grow really well for me. So I've got a large variety to start with, and I've weeded them down to the ones that grow well here. There was the variety. I know I don't want to stick with sweet potatoes all day. People aren't probably interested. I don't know. But you had a variety that no matter what, even the organic ones from the store you were buying, but they were organic, but they were irradiated. That Which was, ones were those? That was the Okinawa purple. And Deborah got some for me. So oh, she got the, you yeah, mean slips? She got the slips for me and gave me some. So I've got those set up in totes. Right now, everything's really too muddy to leave them in the ground. So I want to make sure I get them going for next year because of all the rain. Otherwise, I'll leave them in the ground. Okay, cool. And then we got the seeds. I've got my seeds growing and then you've got yours. Yeah, it's just starting. I think you just set them up. Yeah, I just set up the midgen berries yesterday. So that's just set set up. And you've got your cilantro, which is starting to really take off. It took almost a month. There's a date on the top. Let me see the date. Or oh, look at that. And they just took off. Yep. And of course, you've got your my dragon fruit. Dragon fruit in there. The, that's the yellow. The yellow dragon fruit, and that's just sort of the right microclimate for them to really thrive at this stage. Keep it snap shut. I've got a method on that, a mad, crazy method. And then you got your table. Your, I know you're just starting a bunch. What's back there, all that? Oh, that's my purple passion, passion fruit vine. I took some cuttings. I'm striking some in water. I'm going to strike some in the soil, but I'm experimenting both ways. And it's kind of a bit of a mishmash here. I've got some black turmeric in this pot to store. I've got some sunchokes in here that have just started to sprout. They've got actually roots underneath. So I've just covered them in soil, keep it moist but not wet. So I stored them in here over summer, over winter. I think I might bring some seeds here because the temperature is really good. It's like 65 degrees and you don't have a heater or anything in here. No, this is an unheated room. Just by keeping the doors closed and having a south-facing window on yep. here. all that south-facing. It's amazing what you can grow on a south-facing window. i got a whole bunch of stuff on the kitchen window. All right, so, and then, oh, what is this? Now, that's a, uh, that's a dragon fruit. It's, it's a purple variety. I'm trying to, I got that from Deborah, too. It was a piece that broke off. Oh, this was a piece that broke off of another plant. Okay. Yeah. And then you've got... My Malanga, so that's a Malanga. I've got more Malanga here. This one died back, 
This one stayed green, so I've kept it as an indoor plant over winter. So I'll get that back in the ground later on. So I dug that up, put it in a pot, brought it into a warmer room. Okay. I might grab some slips from you or... I'm trying a sweet potato right now. I don't think it's going to grow because there's a terminology that's starting to show up. I want to talk more about it, and it's called ready to eat. And as soon as you see that on anything, you know right away they've been zapped to keep them free, you know, clean. Yeah. And then on top of that, it lasts longer. So when I see ready to eat, that's now my my new thing to, if I want to try to grow it, it's probably not going to grow. All right, well, this is interesting, and I know you got a lot more to do because we're just hitting spring, and boy, they say another rainstorm in the next half hour. It just doesn't stop, and it's cold. It was like 36, 37 degrees last night. Really cold. I think it's supposed to be again cold. All right, well, I'm going to, you know what? How about we run down to your garden? I'll meet you down there. Yeah, let's do that. All right, I'll do that. Look at that. Hey, guys. Look at this. Their favorite place to hide out under the orange tree. Actually, they eat oranges as they dry. Okay, let's head over to Gary's garden. There they are. Look at the blood oranges. Aren't they gorgeous? That tree needs a good thinning. And we've got my um, kumquat there. And then I've got there my pink lemonade. So this is mom. I would say that's mom. And then there's two chicks there. There's the other chick. And then that's another chick, but he's a, that's a rooster. Look at that. He looks different than the other ones. Look at this. They're gonna protect their yard. Isn't that funny? And these are all four clocks. All right, let's go into Gary. Let me see if Gary's around. Is Gary around? I'm sure he is if you two are hanging out here. Ivy. Okay, let's go see what's going on in Gary's garden. I am now in Gary's garden. I just came down the stairs from where the chickens were. And so you are down here working too now. Well, I guess you said you were going to meet me here. So yeah. you are working though, aren't you? Yeah, I'm working. I'm clearing up. I'm trying to get things together. So everything's saturated wet, especially my ponds. Anything sitting in the ponds aren't going to drain properly. It's not enough time for the water to drain down. But there's not a lot going on in the totes in the kiddie pools. But I'm still working down here. I'm trying to clear the pathways and cutting back on a lot of things, uh, just trimming. I'm still collecting passion fruit off the ground. So some of those are still ripening. They're not quite ready to fall yet. I see a couple that are getting the, the purple stage. I just wait until they drop. You don't harvest those off the tree or the vine. And I'm clearing through. I'm going through my totes. The water's collecting. I've got different soil than you do. So the water's collecting in some of the totes. So these are, this is where I was getting the sweet potatoes from. So oh, so you have the sweet potatoes in totes now? I've got some in totes, some of my special varieties. So I've had those growing in totes, but you can see on a good day, this is nice and friable, but the water just can't drain fast enough for me. But this is native clay with sifted wood chips, so it's a different mixture to what you're using. Well, just to do a zip through, and then I'll do a separate garden tour another time. Look at the peppers, and you've got the garlic and everything right. What if we just, can we walk or is it too muddy to just walk through yeah, here? Could, like a zigzag Yeah, walk. we could zigzag Do you through, have yeah. any, like, well, before I get into damage, you've got the strawberries growing. There's a banana back there, I see. Your nasturtiums are growing everywhere. Look at that. Yeah. They stayed green all year. Oh, I know what this is. Yep. Shark fin Shark melon. Shark fin melon. And there's quite a few fruits that can be harvested. Uh, yeah, so... You can harvest these ones. They're just dropping the flowers off. The flowers. So we could eaten. harvest that, chop it up, and eat it. That would be the, you know, starting to be the ideal time to you eat. You eat them that small? Yeah, they'll get a little bit bigger if the fruit is set. They'll get a little bit bigger. Now I finally cooked one, and I'll tell you, 
I know when you came in, I said, I'm not doing this again. It was a nightmare to pull those seeds out. But, you know, it was really good in the enchilada. I mean, I prefer zucchini, but it worked. It did work, but oh my gosh, to get all those seeds out. And then this is all, so you got shark fin melon and nasturtium, but you got nasturtium. sweet potatoes under here too, yeah, right? Yeah, I've got sweet potatoes scattered all through here at different stages. Yeah, here's, here's sweet potatoes. And they're putting on a lot of new growth, some of them. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to clear some of that so out of the way. I had my ginger in here. I ha harvested that and got that in stored inside because, again, this that's not too bad in that tote. But this one, it's just way too wet. So cold, they can handle. Cold and wet, they can't. So I got them out here. I just harvested some ginger myself, and you can see it. But, it's, you know, as it's drying, it's it's okay. But, boy, when I took it out, I was lucky it didn't rot. My blueberry lost a lot of flowers. The rain knocked a lot of flowers off, but there's still a lot of flowers left. So hopefully that's going to set fruit. It could have been the hail, too. We could had have, so much have, hail. Could have been the hail. Like this here, I suspect a lot of that is hail damage. That's what that is. I looked at it. You have no insects on No, yeah. oh, that's it. Like overnight, all of a sudden, but they, the leaves got shredded by the hailstones. The jade plant, remember? Yep. Even though I'm, I don't like jade plant, they were just pummeled with it, and they turned like that. I looked at it when it came down. I thought, gee, I was here, what, a week ago, and there were no insects. But no, that's hail yeah. damage. And we've been having hail for, what, over a week now. Yeah, so that's it. Too cold for insects. So my pond is sort of, things are falling in, being blown into my pond. I'm trimming my canners back, but they're still going strong. They're flowering. So that, see, that spike's gone, so I'll just deadhead that. And now that will continue to flower and won't set seed. So the hummingbirds really love the cannas. That's Canna edulis, Queensland arrowroot. And then these totes here have got sweet potatoes in them. Of course, they can't drain properly because the holes are in the water. So the water's filling up, so I'm going to have to dig those out. And this this end, I've got my sweet potato set up in different areas. This end's mainly orange. So I've got probably store-bought Beauregard's here. So that's an orange fleshed one. I want it. Yeah, I'll, I'll dig it up and then you can start it in the house. I'm going to start in the house like when I was a kid. You put in the window toothpicks. Yeah. And my gosh, I had a friend that must have had it a hundred feet long throughout her whole house on one sweet potato. Yeah. But I had it, my mother used to, when I was a kid, my mom, that was our plant, that was our house plant. She would bring home a sweet potato and then we'd plant it and it'd be all over yeah. the kitchen. Yeah, that's the fun way of growing them with kids. So I'm and there's no, it doesn't matter which way you stick them in because it's not coming from the bottom, the roots, it's coming from the eyes. Yeah. Sometimes you can't even see the eyes until it starts to develop. But yeah, this I can see has got a lot of eyes. Yeah, so you just clean it up and you just try to get as many eyes if you see them up and then just put it in the water. It's so cool. See, this is still growing strong and this is like a hedging or a screening plan. I've got the sweet potatoes growing up the chain link. So this is still doing good, even with the cold, it's doing okay. Hope it warms Some of up. my bananas kind of got too wet and they crashed with the wind and whatever. But they'll come back. It's so beautiful in yeah. here. And if you just watch your feet, we'll just sneak through this side. Purple tree collards flowering. I'm just trying to eat as much of it as I can right now, so I'll just take the flowers and eat it. You can cook that like broccoli. You steam it, and it's so good, and you wouldn't know what it is. And this time of the year, with the cold air, it tastes really sweet. And I've got to clear through there to get to my artichokes and get those all tidied up. Some of the bigger leaves at the bottom have fallen, but I'll trim those back. 
and I'll use that as compost. Now, real quick, is this sweet potato or what is this down here? Yeah, that's sweet potato. More sweet potato. Yeah, more sweet potato. I've got, I want to harvest this one because it, it's growing in the concrete blocks. So that's going to have tubers inside the block. So I'll just take the block out, trim it back, get to the tubers. Now here's one that's turning brown. So you can't pick them at all? Or they won't ripen right? Is that what it uh, is? There might be some toxicity if you eat them when they're green. So it's best to let them drop and harvest them after they fall. Okay. Now there's a lot of things like that. You've got a tiny little tomato. Uh, a, a pepino! Pepino. A little tiny pepino! But my pepinos, they're perennials here, so they're growing over winter. And this is a nectarine, yes, here? Yeah, or? this is a nectarine. It hasn't flowered. So it's just started to uh, green up. It hasn't flowered yet. There might be, oh yeah, there's a couple of flower buds started. I see the buds starting, but we'll see what happens. It's so cold, poor thing. And then eggplant? Yeah, eggplant. This is one of my worst eggplants. It okay. doesn't look so great. Look at all the passion fruit. You must have hundreds of them. Yeah, I still have hundreds. I don't know how many passion fruit I've harvested. And of course, the hummingbird nest is up here. Oh, that's right. It made it through all those hailstorms yeah. and the freezing weather. And the babies are getting pretty big. You can see their little beaks pointing towards us. Oh, yeah, I see them. Yeah, the tongue's going in and out. Knock your head on these things. Look at that. It is, this is no joke. This is a jungle. Look at this. And I've moved my strawberries that were in the totes there. I've moved those outside. I've removed some of the pepper trees, a couple of the pepper trees out there, the Brazilian peppers. I'm going to take the ones out along the wall and now I I had the totes up on the elevated planter so that when I removed the pepper trees they sent out growth from the roots so I was able to isolate the roots out and dig those out so now I can start growing back in the ground in places so the totes are going against the peppers that are in my main garden I guess we'll step outside for a minute. Oh, you've got like an orchard like Deborah set up, my daughter. I'm just, no, not here. I'm just looking. I'm going to step outside. It just reminded me of Deborah's orchard now that she's setting up. She's doing fabulous videos on them. And she took an area probably around this size and then went straight back to the wall. And she's going to have a full orchard. Oh, she's going to plant it all up. She's going to take everybody step by step. This is cool. So you're making this into an orchard or are you going no, to... this is where I'm going to grow my tomatoes. Okay, so this is a so, tomato field. Yeah, so I've put up the sliding glass doors along there. That'll give more heat to the area, build the heat up. And I'm going to remove the wood chips and have clay here. So this will be hotter. I'm going to create a new microclimate. Can I say something? Yes. By putting the glass here, I know you've got a little bit too much sun for peppers. But you can put something that wants warm, likes a warmer climate on the other side. It's not going to yep. have any draft. Those totes are going to be moved too. And then what are you putting on the other side? I'm, or you don't know yet? Uh, I've got an idea of what I want to do. Okay. But with my, my hoops, I'm putting hoops on this side and hoops on the other side. So when I get the other side cleared, I'll bend more hoops out of rebar hoops and set up another arbor on that side. So I'm collecting weeds right now, 
and I'm going to do some trench composting. So instead of planting a green manure, which a lot of people do, I'd rather harvest the, have these growing somewhere else and harvest them so that when I dig them up, I'm bringing minerals into my garden, if that makes any sense. No, I understand. If you do a green manure, it's going to grow in the same soil that you've already removed the plants from and you're taking the minerals out of the soil. So by harvesting the weeds, burying it under the soil, you're bringing minerals in. It's and basically the same thing that I'm doing in totes and containers where people are growing container gardening, but you're returning it to the soil. That's yeah, and I'm pulling roots and all because that's there's going to be 30% more minerals in the roots and they've already been taken up by a plant. So when I plant here, the minerals will be more readily available to what I grow here. When I, when I pull things, I also do that too. I chop up the roots though. So this is fabulous. This is, this is great. Let's keep going. Yep, I think we've got the going. storm ready to hit. And then we've got a windstorm too, they said now. Yeah, and I don't know if there's any more onions left here, but all these onions, the smaller ones in here, I dug up, they were volunteers. I had onions growing over there and they volunteered. So these are the ones that we bought and we brought those in and these are the volunteers. So these are volunteers, those are volunteers. I okay, just so you dug them up from the ground? Dug them up from the, from the ground, stuck them in the totes and off they go. Oh my gosh, look at the water, your, your cart here. Everything's got water in it. Yeah. The amount of rain we had and hail and everything is unbelievable. Well, what else do you want to show? And then we can wrap this up. Yeah, Go check my daughter's video out, though, if you haven't seen it. It might give you ideas on how in your small yard you can make an orchard. She's going to have plant, and she's told me she's going to plant all kinds of other stuff in there. You'll have to watch and see how she does that. As you got your stinging nettles, you got the totes all here. Are you gonna, what are you doing along that wall, or you do not know yet? That, that's where I'm going to move my elevated planter. The one elevated planter that was in my garden, I'm going to move it out here because the peppers have got really invasive roots and they've, they've moved into my main garden. If I have the totes elevated, I can do some root pruning, keep them away from my plants. And then you've got your tunnel that you're going to start working on. Then I've got my tunnel. I'll get this started again. So this side will be totes, and this side I may plant a few more things in the ground. Because right now I'm starting to get a handle on the roots of the Brazilian peppers. So they, re they really are invasive, and I just want to keep them under control. And that's the Brazilian peppers. And he planted those about 10 years ago, and they were tiny. Little, tiny, tiny trees, what, like a foot tall? Yeah, about a foot tall. They're a good screening plant, they block the wind, and I, I like them for that, but in hindsight, if I, knowing what I know now, I would not have planted them in California. Well, if you don't have a garden, the robins like them. A lot of birds eat the berries. Yeah, the robins really come in and they really like eating the berries. So they're a useful plant. You just have to understand that they're going to be a lot more maintenance than you know, other plants. Wow, look at the dragon fruit is unbelievable. Unbelievable, oh, look. I don't know, I look at him now and it's like, oh no, 30 minutes of trying to take those seeds out. Yeah, and, and this is interesting because this will grow in a cooler weather, cooler weather. It'll just take off in cooler weather. Yeah, look how it's growing and we've been in the 30s and it's yeah. like, oh, no big deal. It's a shame it's not like a regular squash. If it was like a reg regular squash, you, then you'd really have something you know, very val valuable. Well, I took mine in that was sitting, actually that one was sitting for a while when I brought it in, my shark fin melon that I cooked last night, or the night before, I should say. And I should have, next time I'll try a smaller one, a younger yeah. one, and we'll see how that goes. So some of them I'm storing, leaving them where they are, and bringing them in when I when I want them like that I've got some stored and some le I left outside just, just as a comparison to see if 
I, whether I have to bring them in or not. I've got the truck bed, a whole bunch of them in there, and they look as good as new. I just don't know what I'm going to do with them. There's a lot of ways I know you can cook them, but not the way that I want to cook them. This is really cool. I mean, this is really nice. And I'm looking at the sky. First, we have black, black clouds. It's unbelievable. And now we have blue sky. But see how it keeps changing? It just keeps changing. And they said it, we were having a really big rainstorm and windstorm. So I can't think of anything else. I have been everywhere today. Today, I have been on the deck in the garden, well, the past day or two. And now in your garden, I've been in your back room. So a little bit of everything, and this is going to be a lot of fun this year. So I guess that's it. I think we should wrap it up, and we can come back and do another garden tour in your garden real soon because it's, I, I feel spring. I hope I'm right. I feel spring, and I'm hoping it's going to get nice and warm, and then we can take off and start growing. But we're starting our seeds now. So, yeah. All right, so I guess with that. Oh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and I hope you got something out of it if you'd like to leave a comment feel free to leave a comment and with that thanks for watching and don't forget to eat what you grow bye bye, bye. So we just walked out of Gary's garden. He was playing with the chickens. He eats oranges and he gives them the seeds. Looking at the hummingbirds, you could feel the weather changing. And less than an hour after I walked in the house. 130 above sea level. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. I'm gonna see if I, oh, Deborah's calling. Hold on, let me just stick you out the door. I couldn't resist. We went live, my daughter was calling. It was snowing for the first time since 1930 I'm in this lying. area. It's snowing! So we finished May 1st in the snow. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye bye! Here, come on, that's enough already. Go in the house. Go in your warm blanket. I'm gonna throw you on your warm blanket. It's not the heat blanket. Just no, because I want broccoli. Go, 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 kitty, go in the house doesn't want to. We're outside and we're excited. So she thinks there's something to be... This might be too big. This one's almost going to open. I don't know if you want a piece that's going to open. Wrap and call it thunder snow. Thunder snow? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure the news will be covering it later.